Hi friends, welcome to this video on decision trees. Decision tree is a very widely used machine learning algorithm. Uh, it has its foundation in statistics and it is used for other statistical analysis as well. And in this video, we will understand the intuition behind decision trees and in future videos, we'll get into more detail and we will also look at some code using which decision trees can be implemented. So let's go ahead and look at the intuition behind how decision trees really work. But before that, let's understand what is a decision. Now in our day-to-day -day life, we make so many decisions. Some are smaller decisions, maybe about what movie to watch or what food to order or uh, what book to read. And some of them can be big life decisions, you know. Um, uh, the smaller decisions can be taken pretty fast by our brain, whereas the bigger decisions can take maybe days or months. Uh, so let's look at one such uh, decision making here. So Ram is a great student who wants to take admission into a master's program in the US. And he got admission into five universities and now he has to choose which one to go for. So Ram here has a decision to make. So what does he do then? So he goes ahead and starts collecting data about all these five universities. And based on the data, he does some analysis based on maybe, you know, he has some criteria based on which he will take his decision. Uh, so he uh, looks at all those criteria, he compares all his data, and then he arrives at his decision, which is over here in this table. Uh, so his uh, selected university is University C and all the other four universities are not selected. So basically he has classified all five universities into two categories. One is uh, selected and the other one is not selected, right? So how does he uh, take this decision? So like I said, he has some criteria, right? So let's say Ram has two criteria. One is what is the tuition fees like? And the second one is what is the placement like in the university? Uh, after somebody graduates, right? So he collects data on these two criteria for all five universities and then he creates this flow diagram structure. I guess all of you, uh, you know, are familiar with the flow diagram structure and this is how actually a decision tree looks like. So he, he asks, he first asks the question, uh, how much is the tuition fees and then uh, based on the answer to that question, he then asks, what is the placement percent? And then based on the answer to that question, he takes his final decision. So let's say for University A, the tuition fees was 120K and the placement was 95%. So the first question is whether tuition fee is more than 100K. And the answer in this case is yes, because tuition fee is 120K. So he goes in this direction in the flow chart because, you know, if it is yes, we come here and the box says that no, this uh, particular university cannot be selected because its tuition fee is more than 100K and RAM cannot pay more than 100K. So in this case, he does not even come to this part of his decision tree because the university fails at the very first question itself and the output is that the university is not selected. Now let's say if this is university C now and in this case the data that he has collected is that tuition fees is 80k and placement is 92%. So he once again asks the same question is the tuition fee, fee greater than 100k and this time the answer is no because it is 80k it is less than 100k. So then he comes to his second question and he asks is placement greater than 90% and yes it is greater than 90% because it is 92%. So he comes in this direction and he gets the answer as yes. So the output in this case is that University C is selected, right? So these are just two questions. Uh, there could have been many more questions that Ram had asked and, uh, you know, step by step, he had gone and uh, got his final output, right? So this is how a decision tree actually works. You know, there's no other complication to it if you are doing a simple classification problem it will ask a series of 
uh, you know questions or a series of conditions though that will be tested one after another till uh, the final output is uh, arrived at right of the final class uh, of decision is taken right uh, and decision trees uh, can be used for both regression or a quantitative uh, outcome or classification that is a qualitative outcome so the example that we saw it was a qualitative response isn't it it was either selected or not selected so it was a classification uh, decision tree uh, where we had a quantitative response but we can also have quantitative responses uh, done through a decision tree algorithm and they're very simple and easy to interpret right because if you look at these uh, the decision tree you can very simply understand how uh, it works one after another how the uh, criteria are tested and uh, uh, you know and we finally come at the output and it may not uh, be as simple as we saw there could be many many criteria that are tested and make our decision tree quite big and complicated but that's how it works and one of the important things in a decision tree is um, the point where the criteria is tested and we decide to go in um, a or b direction right like we saw uh, that you know we are uh, testing a criteria and we are going in yes or no direction right so that's a very important uh, point in a decision tree and we always want to split in a way such that impurity in result reduces and we'll look at what that means but i just want to highlight that that point where the split is happening is a very critical point in the decision tree algorithm uh so now this is a decision tree example and I wanted to show you which part of the decision tree means uh, what. So in this decision tree we actually have three criteria. We have tuition, we have placement and we also have a scholarship and then finally we have the results of uh, whether selected or not selected as uh, you know yes or no. So the split which I was talking about that's what is happening over here this point where we are testing this criteria and we are either moving uh, in no or in yes so this is where that this tree got split into two parts and uh, uh, each of those direction leads us to further criteria so this is again another split that is happening here right so this one has actually three uh, splits happening one is happening here and two more are happening here right and then branches are these connectors which are connecting us from uh, this criteria to this criteria or this criteria to this criteria right so these are our branches and then all these uh, criteria these are our internal nodes scholarship tuition placement right and then the final points where the final decisions are taken they are the leaves and all of these uh, terminolo terminologies are kind of based on uh, trees like branches and leaves uh, and stuff like that. So they're related to leaves. So but uh, very easy to understand and very intuitive in what do they mean. And they are kind of like trees and uh, they, they have leaves and branches uh, simulating uh, trees. So in one of the previous slides, I talked about the impurity in uh, results. So to explain that, let's take the example of um, classification of emails into spam and non-spam. So whenever we get any email into our inbox, um, it either ends up in the inbox folder or the main inbox folder or it goes into our spam folder. So internally, there is some algorithm which is uh, looking at the content of the emails and then it is putting it in the spam folder or our main inbox folder based on that right so uh, let's say that we are using the decision tree algorithm to do this kind of a classification and uh, we have two uh, result sets over here this is result set number one and this is result set number two and the green color represents non-spam emails and the blue color represents the spam 
emails so let's say uh, a, you know our algorithm is testing a number of different criteria and then at one point uh, it uses a particular criteria to split um, and create two result sets and uh, uh, the first example, the first criteria, whatever criteria that is used, it creates a result set that looks like this, right? So there are kind of equal number of non-spam and spam emails uh, in each of the ends of the uh, split. But here we are probably using a different criteria which is resulting in a classification of the results uh, in this manner such that this particular uh, box over here it contains mostly the non-spam emails and just one spam email and this one contains mostly all spam emails and only one non-spam email so here our split is quite good right there is less impurity so less impurity meaning that um, one particular box is almost completely non-spam and one particular box is, a box is almost completely spam, right? So whatever criteria that is used to create the second set of split is actually a better criteria than the first one which actually creates a split which is a mix of both. So it does not really create a, a clean split and we always want to split in a way so that our result is as clean as possible so that then prediction becomes easier for us in future okay and um, there are two common ways to know how good our split is one of them is called a Gini index and the other one is called cross entropy and we prefer both of them to have a smaller value uh, and uh, because the smaller value indicates that the node is of uh, high purity, uh, which means that the classification has happened pretty well in those, uh, in those with the help of those nodes or the, the, the criteria that is in, represented by that node. Now we will see uh, in the next video how uh, the Gini index and the cross entropy, uh, these values are calculated. But before that, in the next video, we will actually look at a, an example of a regression decision tree and a classification uh, decision tree and how uh, they work uh, a bit in a little bit more detail. And then we will look at the formula for Gini index and cross entropy and how they are calculated with, uh, with the help of some examples. But in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of intuition about decision trees. So I hope you were able to uh, understand uh, that. And um, uh, thank you so much for watching this uh, little video. Uh, and uh, I will talk to you again uh, in the next video uh, that will come next week. So thank you so much.